Hello everyone, good morning, good evening. This is Amy from Wandering the World channel. One of the best adventures my family and I have done is a trip to the amazing country of Peru. Some of the highlights of our trip include paragliding in Lima, experiencing a solar eclipse while we were actually hiking in Machu Picchu. So that was quite an experience. Hiking the treacherous peak of Huayna Picchu. So when you see pictures of Machu Picchu, it's the peak above Machu Picchu. Eating alpaca burger, and last but not least, drinking the most expensive coffee ever made. It's coffee beans from monkey poop. Yes, you heard me right. Coffee beans from poop expelled from monkeys. Machu Picchu is the most famous place in Peru and involves some trickier than usual planning logistics. For my family and I, we took a plane ride from San, actually two plane rides from San Francisco to Lima, another plane ride from Lima to Cusco, and then a drive from Cusco to the Sacred Valley, and then finally a train ride from the Sacred Valley to Aguas Calientes, which is the town where Machu Picchu is located. So definitely a lot of travel involved, but it's doable. I did all the planning and arranging without a guide. So join me in this two-part series to our once-in-a-lifetime adventure to Machu Picchu. A gentle reminder to please hit the like and subscribe button below to support my channel. Thank you, everyone. Part one highlights our adventures to get to Machu Picchu from paragliding in Lima to Cusco and the Sacred Valley in Ollantaytambo. Part two highlights our adventures in Machu Picchu, Cusco and the Sacred Valley. I also highlight the hike that we took to get to Huayna Picchu, the peak that you see right above Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu is in the country of Peru in South America. There's quite a bit of tricky logistics and advanced planning in order to make this trip in one of the new seven wonders of the world. You will have to catch a flight onto the capital city of Lima. For us, we flew from San Francisco to Panama City, then after the layover, catch another flight to Lima. And after a long air travel, we finally arrive at Lima, the capital of Peru. Our Airbnb is 45 minutes away in Miraflores, an amazing district full of restaurants, sites, and paragliding. The main place to enjoy paragliding is in Miraflores, one of the best known areas with a privileged view of the ocean. The most popular spot for paragliding in Lima is located at the clifftop in Parque Raimondi, just a short walk north of the Parque del Amor. Although it's not necessary to book in advance, it is advisable to call beforehand to consult for maximum weights and weather conditions. If you are afraid of heights, it's better to put this activity aside. This is one of the most exhilarating things I have ever done. Foodies like me love Peru. I got to try their ceviche, seafood paella, and their popular pisco sour drink and corn of different shapes and sizes. We were lucky enough to witness a very colorful Festival of the Sun Parade when we were there. And we got to see the catacombs at the Monastery of San Francisco, 
not for the faint of heart. The next part of the journey is taking a flight from Lima to Cusco and then immediately taking a drive from Cusco to Ollantaytambo. Cusco is at 11,000 feet altitude and a lot of people feel the effects of high altitude sickness in this elevation. And what was surprising was when we got out of the airport, there was a whole bowl of coca leaves, which is supposed to help with altitude sickness. I thought you were going to eat it. Well, not yet. <laughs> not much of a video. Though. So we hired a driver to take us to the Sacred Valley, a lot lower elevation than Cusco, stopping at key points like an animal sanctuary where we got to see alpacas and llamas and other exhibits displaying the Peruvian way of life. There are 300 kinds of potatoes. Yes. Mm, you're eating. Spit in my mouth. Spit in your <laughs> mouth. Video of it. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. The Mara Salt Mine is another cool detour. There are hundreds of ponds owned by local families that make up the picturesque Maras, all connected through an impressive underground network of canals that fill these pools with salt water. Over time, the intense sun will slowly evaporate the water, leaving behind the salt that is later extracted through ancestral techniques by local family members. We finally reach Ollantay Tambo, which is our home for the next two days before heading to Machu Picchu. It's a village in the sacred valley of South Peru, set on the Urubamba River amid snow-capped mountains. It makes for a fantastic base for which to explore the rest of the sacred valley. You can spend time here exploring the many archaeological gems in the area while you simultaneously get acclimated to the altitude. up there. This is Oyai Taya Tambo. The Temple of the Sun is arguably one of the most sophisticated of Inca constructions. It was built with pink granite. The stone quarry is located about two and a half miles away on the other side of the valley. And how is it that someone, even with modern technology, can move so many titanic stones of that size towards the lower part of the mountain, cross the river, and then climb them for several hundred meters to the place where the Temple of the Sun is located? How are they cut? So straight, and with what equipment? Truly mind-boggling. Stay tuned next week for part two of our two-part series for Peru. We finally get to go to Machu Picchu and during a solar eclipse. Thank you, everyone.